All right, my RC buddies out there. Um, so this is the new FMS uh, F-16 Fighting Falcon, just came out. Uh, it's beautiful. I mean, I had to buy it. I, I have uh, uh, a few other F-16s in different sizes, uh, like three 50 mils of which, uh, which have been built up and uh, with bigger engines and stuff like that. But uh, I do have another 64 millimeter that looks actually real similar to this one. It's a Starmax. It's an old Starmax. Um, but uh, I, I, when I saw the nav lights on this bad boy, I said, I got to get it. I had to get it. Anyways, um, so I just bought it. I, uh, I'm just doing a quick video on the mods that I did here. Um, so first off, this would be for people that are doing belly landers, um, I don't have, we don't have a runway at our field. We've got a beautiful field, it's huge, uh, and there's no trees and it's flat, but no runway, unfortunately. So all my planes, which got like about 25 or 30 of them, they're all belly landers. Unfortunately, the F-16 is the worst for belly landing. Uh, it takes the, it, it, it definitely is not a, it's not designed to be a belly lander. It should be done with, uh, with um, uh, landing gear, but I'm just going to show you what I did here. So uh, I did take off the landing gear. I didn't put on the ventral fins um, because it would land right on the ventral fins, uh, which sucks because I actually bought a couple extra sets of them. But um, I did to fortify this because this is the area that collapses. If you come down with a hard landing, you can collapse this, and that kind of makes the plane worthless. And I've had it happen on uh, on other F-16s that I've had, and I've owned probably, I don't know, 10 over the past 15 years. So this right here has a strip of fiberglass and a strip, a wider strip back here. I didn't, I would have just gone all the way across, but I didn't want to cover up the uh, lights. Um, I used a 100 gram cloth on this strip here. And this is a 48 gram right here. I use 30 minute epoxy, mixed up real well, get it on there quick. And then I just, with hand, with with my fingers, just kind of massage it out, get the bubbles out and I wrap it here. So that's definitely gonna give it some, uh, when it lands, whether it lands this way and it falls down onto it, it'll definitely give it some strength there um, and prolong the intake, but, um, so that would be the first thing that I did um, and would recommend that you do if you're making this a belly lander. This is, oh, okay, so this takes, they say in the manual, it takes a, a 2200 to a 2600. I actually bought a brand new 2700 Turning G Nanotech. I love these batteries. They're high powered, they're lightweight, they're lighter weight than their, uh, and then other the, the counterparts this one here is a 2700 milliamp 65 to 130 c rated uh battery um i have quite a few of these um in, in different sizes and uh they're good batteries they they pack a punch um i also have a 2200 uh liperior which is a 75 c rated battery and i have another 2700 40 c rated battery um, which actually these turn out that their weight is about the same. So these will be the batteries I'll use to fly. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to show you, I did have to mod it in order to get the CG within the range. Normally the, the foam comes all the way out to here. You could see right there is where the landing gear, uh, was, uh, the servo was right here. I built a shelf that came all the way out to here. Um, and then the battery sat here, uh, just in front of the shelf. Unfortunately, uh, once I put this in, it was pushed. It just pushed the nose down way too much. Um, the CG was uh, way forward. So the the book says the CG should be between 75 and 85. I today this morning took a Dremel and with the drum sander just drummled back this platform that I built, I drummled it back and also moved this. This was up here. I 
disconnected it and put a new uh, double-sided uh, um, uh, uh, tape on, not double-sided tape, but uh, you know what I'm saying. Um, uh, actually, I'm using the, what is this stuff called? Uh, it is VHB, which is extremely, it's like gluing the thing on almost, but you can get it off with a razor blade. Um, so it's, uh, so that's been moved back here so that I can accommodate this battery. Now, this is set for 82 millimeter COGs. So 82 back from the leading edge right here. Um, the range in the book says 75 to 85. I have it more towards the back because another YouTuber who does a lot of um, uh, videos on planes, uh, I, th uh, I think it's called The Aviator. He recommended that uh, to make, he says the best CG, at least for him, was 93, not, not 85, which would be as far back, but he's going beyond it another, what, uh, eight millimeters. So I was trying to get this back as far as I can without shoving the battery back to here. Uh, I think that 82, that's towards the backside of the range of 75 to 85, so I'm happy with it. Um, that will fit in there nicely and then these two just needed to be brought forward a little bit uh, so that one is right there and these two are here on at the black line right there so uh, 2740 C battery zippy battery will be about here uh, so will the Liperior 75 2275 C will be about here as well because um, they weigh the same and then this Nanotech 70, 70, uh, 2765C is just going to be pushed all the way back there. Now, that also, I had to go and take a Dremel drill bit and, and drill this thing back along the side here so I could slide this back about a half inch. So now that this can actually do something and uh, not just be at the very front of it but actually get a good wrap on the on the battery on all the on all these batteries so these uh these three batteries have been set for the same cg so now i shouldn't have to do what i had to do yesterday and that was to trim it because uh when i put these full back because which is what i did before i just drummeled all this another inch and a half inch and a quarter out of it um uh, i i had to i had to go up on the elevator probably about five or six clicks to accommodate this i don't want to have to do this every time i'm switching batteries out so uh that way i can put any one of these size batteries and and i don't I sh it sh the trim should remain the same so anyways that's it uh that's that's what i did there um that's how much i shaved out which is uh, an inch and a half more than an inch and a half from where the foam line is to accommodate these heavier C batteries um, along with uh, what I did here um, fiberglass in it and just getting rid of the landing gears now I will say that um, I had a buddy throw it and I will say I'm extremely impressed because this thing out of the box actually only required a couple clicks, at least when I was using the 2200C. It only required a couple clicks up and a couple clicks, I think, to the right or, or left. I can't remember, but it out of the box was pretty much trim, which is a rarity. I mean, most of my planes, because they all have beefed up engines in them, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a handful until you get them trimmed. So. Uh, I will say I'm really impressed with FMS, uh, the fact that this out of the box was almost dead on trimmed. Um, so their assembly crew does a good job. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, let's see, we talked about the fiberglass. I showed you what I did, cut it all the way back to there, got rid of the servo, got rid of the metal uh, rod that goes down through here. You can see that's been fiberglassed over right there. And uh, I did use an a I did buy an AR630, which I never do. All mine are AR620s, only because I thought I would use safe um, when I have to hand launch it myself instead of having somebody else hand launch it. 
but um, I, I just don't know if it's actually working. I mean, it, it does work a little bit, but it doesn't correct a whole lot. So I'm not certain. Um, put in intermediate mode. I didn't really hear anything happening, which you should be able to see, you know, maybe, maybe it's just minute, but uh, I, I just went ahead and mained it with the turned off, which is, you know, in retrospect, I should have just, I don't really need stabilizing. Uh, I just uh, probably should have bought an AR620 and, and instead of the 30, but uh, oh well, it's in there. Um, and that's it. The next part of this video will be uh, just a, a flight video in the Maiden.